Welcome, everybody, to Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day. I'm P.J. Gradowski, Director of Athletic Communications, joined by... I'm Adam Bowden, uh, Associate Director of Athletic Communications. And today is Basketball Media Day. It's a little different than in years past. You know, years past, we'd have the big press conference. We have, you know, a bunch of media here, alumni, you know, donors, supporters of all kinds. Obviously, with, with the pandemic, it's a, a, you know, a little different now. Everything has to be socially distanced here. Adam and I do not hate each other, despite the fact that we're this far apart. You might hate me. I mean, it's very possible. <laughs> there are a lot of people who hate me. Um, but, you know, we're going to be interviewing, you know, both head coaches today, Mike Davis and Anne-Marie Gilbert. We're going to be interviewing several players for the men's and women's basketball teams, just to give everybody a little bit more inside information as we get closer and closer to the season. Adam, I, I, I almost can't believe we are, we are this close, really. That's crazy. A little less than two weeks, and uh, you know we finally made it through a pandemic, and and hopefully get some uh, basketball in here soon. Yeah, we definitely need some basketball. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit different, you know, even with the games. Callahan Hall, no fans are allowed this year. Uh, we are gonna have cutouts. We're looking forward to see everyone's face with cutouts. Uh, you know, get us some good poses in the seats there. Whatever you want to do, every all the information's online, DetroitTitans.com. And you know, like I said, you know, basketball starting in two weeks here. Uh, the preseason polls are already out. You know, Detroit Mercy men's basketball picked to finish ninth. The women have picked to finish tenth. But we have demanded a recount. <laughs> you know, we, we think the school located 23 miles uh, away from us. They kind of did some stuff with the balloting. So we, we have demanded that recount, and we're, we're pretty confident here that once that comes back, uh, you know, the, you know, the teams are going to be moving up in the polls a little there's bit. There's some votes out there. There, there, there are some votes out there. You know, we, we were looking around. We found a few votes just driving around. You know, <laughs> it said Detroit Mercy second or third. Yep. So I mean, it's, you know, it's just just a little bit different world. But we hope everybody enjoys today's me you know, media day. Like I said, you know, you have several players from both the men's and women's team, both head coaches. Enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day. We're going to start it off with head coach Mike Davis and the men's basketball program. Coach, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long, you know, six, seven, eight months here. But, you know, we're at media day now. We're going to kick off the season here in a couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, just to start off with, you know, what's it been like this last six, seven, you know, eight months, you know, trying to recruit, trying to get, you know, contact with players, trying to, you know, have that relationship with the current players? What, what's this pandemic been like? Well, first of all, we um – it really just lost track of basketball with everything that was going on. It was really, you know, once in a lifetime situation for everyone uh, through the experience standpoint. So we uh, just really try to make sure everybody was safe and healthy. Uh, we did a lot of calls. Uh, it was hard, really hard to get a hold of some kids because of the pandemic. But at the same time, we just stayed on the phone, stayed on the phone, and um, no one could go out, no one could visit. Uh, so you had to start just kind of creating ways of, of recruiting. You know, you talk about one of the things that, that the program did do a great job of and, and the guys did a great job was, you know, last semester they had, a th you know, over a 3.0 GPA. So, you know, they, they took a negative, but you know what? They, they made the best of it. You know, they did the work in the classroom, and I know that's got to make the coaching staff happy. Well, you know, we had good kids, and that's, that's the thing. We had really good kids that uh, even though they were away from us, uh, we stayed on top of them academically. Uh, you know, Angela and Tim and, and Holly, uh, they're doing a great job with us academically. And so uh, our guys stayed on top of it. And even the first semester, uh, we had a great GPA. And so we ended up second semester with another one. So uh, I think from an academic standpoint, uh, everybody's right on track of, of understanding how important it is. You know, we're getting to the fun stuff now, you know, getting ready for the basketball season. You know, so far in practice, you know, you know, three, four weeks of practice here, what have you really seen from the team? Well, we had a little setback with Chris Brandon uh, breaking his wrist. That kind of hurt us a little bit. Um, but we have a really good team. Uh, Noah Waterman is, is a fantastic player. We're just waiting to see if he, he's going to be eligible to play. You know, Bull and Markel. And we got some really good pieces. Uh, Rose is a better player than it was last year, a lot better. Uh, we got Matt Johnson, who I feel like is a really good player. So we have a lot of really good pieces this year that we hadn't had in the past now, just uh, getting everybody – together, healthy, and uh, eligible would, would be the big question mark for us. You know, we're talking about, you know, some of those pieces, you know, talking about the backcourt with Markel Frazier and Matt Johnson. You know, having a couple of guys you know, can handle the ball, how much is that really going to help this team and help Antoine Davis out? Well, it's definitely going to help Antoine a lot. You know, in practice, every practice we keep stats, and he's had like 10 or more assists in every practice. Uh, so we got guys we can really share the ball with. Uh, we got guys who can handle the basketball. 
uh, our intensity. It's just a different team. You know, we've had uh, a couple of people come in and watch us, and immediately you see the difference in the basketball team. So we're excited about that. Uh, I hate Chris is missing the time he's missing because he was the first team all defensive team last year and came back really bigger and stronger and more athletic than he was last year. Uh, shooting the basketball, uh, Coach Lucas did a great job him this summer, working him out throughout the uh, summertime. He has really improved his ball handling and his shooting. And so, uh, you know, right now he really should be like a sophomore if he'd got the red shirt year, but the NCAA is giving everyone back their year. So he's really like a sophomore now. You know, you talk about Chris Brandon, athleticism, how much that's going to help the defense. You know, you know, Bulls, another guy who is long and he's athletic. Torian's obviously long and athletic. So, you know, wh what does that mean for this program to have, you know, three, four guys who, you know, could run up and down the court and then, you know, when they get those hands up high, it just makes everything, more, you know, a little more difficult for the other team. Well, Bull can really shoot the ball. He shot like 47%, not 50% last year from the three-point line. Uh, he didn't average a lot of points at Cal Baptist, but I think here he's a 12 to 14, 15-point guy. Uh, we really go on to him a lot, trying to get him to understand how important – how important it is for him uh, to take shots when he's there. Um, Matt can really shoot the basketball as well. Like I said, Rose shot 44% from three-point line last year. Uh, we run in a totally different system. We have guys can handle the basketball. Uh, even Willie uh, is looking better in how we're playing this year. So what we're doing this year fits him really, really, really good. You know, you mentioned, you know, Dwayne before, you just mentioned uh, Willie before, and obviously Brad's coming back as well. We've seen him in practice. He's a Number one, a smart guy out there. He's almost like another coach for you uh, in a way when he's on the floor. But his shooting ability when he's healthy, I mean, you know, what do you look to see out of him in his second year? Just make shots. You know, we have, like I said, we're much deeper this year than we was last year than we ever been. And so for him coming in and making some shots is very important for us. Uh, we have a really good shooting basketball team this year. We have a lot of guys that you can't bag off of. And in the past, they just kind of zoned up on us and didn't guard certain players. And so it really makes it difficult uh, as a team when they don't guard you. But now if you don't guard some of our guys now, uh, they can make shots. And even if they don't make them, they'll shoot them uh, like, like they're supposed to take the shot. You know, Coach, uh, we already know three games on non-conference schedule with the tournament down at Kentucky. Obviously, everyone's going to talk about Kentucky, but Richmond, no slouch themselves. I mean, they're receiving votes. You know, they were a 21 team last year um, as well. You know, when you open up an, uh, an event like that and playing, you know, two highly regarded teams and a Moorhead said team, which, you know, brings back a lot of players. You know, what, how much is that going to help get ready for the Horizon League season? Well, if I had it up to me, I wouldn't have played Richmond in the first game because they played a Princeton-style offense and uh, they were turning everyone back and they picked to win the Atlantic 10. You know, last year Dayton won the Atlantic 10 and they finished in the top five in the country. And now that they picked Richmond to win it, uh, it's going to be very difficult for us. Uh, great challenge. Then we play Kentucky in the next game. So we got two teams that really should be top 25 teams. Uh, Richmond got some votes for the top 25, but they'll pick to win Atlantic 10 and playing Kentucky, who's a top 10 team, and then Moorhead. So uh, those three games should prepare us. And it's all about our conference. It's all about our conference. We, we have a, a really good team, and uh, we're trying to make sure that we get our guys on the same page and playing with a certain flow and a uh, certain rhythm. Uh, once we start conference play. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that for a second here. Conference play, back-to-back -back games. Um, is is there any sort of team that would have an advantage playing that back-to-back, -back, or is it just going to be a war of attrition as the season goes along? You know, it, like, what are, what is the big advantage and disadvantage of back-to-back -back games against the same opponent? Well, it's a disadvantage if you're not deep from the standpoint of having at least eight to nine players. That's really good because that next game, it's hard to play the next day, but you do a lot of the tournament, but it's – it's a different mindset that you have when you're playing back to back in the tournament. So you got to create that same mindset uh, during a conference play because two games is important at home, two very important. And if you win, then the next game is just as important as the first game. If you lose, you got to at least get one. You can't go 0 2 at home and, and um, unless you go make it up somewhere else on the road. But, you know, playing a team back to back, they know everything you're going to do, and uh, it's going to be difficult. So the challenge is going to be. Uh, to uh, to just come out and play and play and play and the next day uh, put your mindset at a different level and try to go out and perform the best you can. You know, last question. We touched on a lot of players in the team. 
you know, talking about a- Antoine Davis. Obviously, we, we know the awards, the accolades, and, you know, the, the, the points and everything he's done his first two years. If you had to challenge him, you know, more this year, what does he need to do uh, to be, you know, what, what does he need to do and uh, need to improve on to reach that next level? Well, his strength conditioning got to be got to be a lot better because last year's band 150, it's hard to play Thursday, Saturday, uh, 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 Friday, Sunday. It's hard for him to bounce back that second game. Uh, but he's been practicing extremely hard um, this year. He's working hard. I've ever seen him work. Um, you know, we, we, we keep up with all his assists in practice. Like I say, you have like 10 per, per day in practice uh, when, we, when we scrimmage. And that's not counting the shots they miss. But uh, it's pretty good to see him play that way. And he's able to play, I think, a different style this year than he's ever played because of the personnel that we have around him. You know, you have Bull, who, like I said, 50% shooter. You have Matt, who can shoot the basketball. Noah is a special, special talent, 6'11", that can really, really shoot it and handle it. Um, Torrin can shoot it. Uh, Rose, like I said, shot 44. Uh, Brad can shoot. So you got a lot of guys that can shoot the basketball now. We just got to make sure that we all stay on the same page and execute, you know, offensively. Don't panic if you get down eight. Eight points. Don't just start going off on your own and trying to do some things. Just let's let's just stay focused on what we're trying to do. But you know, he Antoine has really, really, really worked hard um, in the off season. He and I, you know, when everything was going on, we got a chance to come in the gym and really work um, in the gym. Just he and I, and uh, he put a lot of work in and he went back to his fundamentals of shooting the basketball. Coach, it's been you know it's been a long process to get to this point, but. Basketball starting in a couple of weeks, and you know I know you're excited. I know the fans are excited, and you know we we just we just we just really need something to you know put a smile on people's faces this year. And I know you're working hard with the team to do that. Well, you know, like I said, the first couple of games are real challenging with Richmond. The first game, uh, Atlantic Ten picked to win Atlantic Ten, and uh, they beat Vanderbilt last year. They beat Wisconsin last year. Uh, they beat some really good teams, South Carolina. So they're really good basketball. We're, we're turning everyone back. And they have the advantage on a lot of teams because when you couldn't practice and you can't play inter score um, scrimmages, you can't play uh, exhibition games, you know. But but to, to have a team that that played together for the last couple of years, you know, they can they can count on um, what, what's the word? Um, they they're ahead of they're ahead of schedule because they've been together. You know, Kentucky is a really talented basketball team, but they hadn't had everybody together like Richmond. And so to play a veteran basketball team without playing any exhibition and without playing, any, without playing anyone else different, uh, it's going to be a challenge. Well, man, we're looking forward to it. That's head coach Mike Davis. He's going to lead the men's basketball program, uh, you know, in his third season here at Detroit Mercy. We'll be back with more on today's media day. Back after this. Back here at uh, Titan Basketball Media Day with uh, head coach Amory Gilbert. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing very well. I'm masked up and I'm <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> coach, just talk about the the difficulties in uh, in coaching in a pandemic year and the challenges that brings. Um, well, you know, as you see, even with this um, interview, you know, we're we're masked up. We're trying to stay um, six feet apart and socially distance and. Um, uh, trying to do that um, in the middle of coaching a, a basketball season um, it, it's going to be very interesting but I really really applaud our young ladies for um, taking it in stride and and really just getting up and down the floor 94 feet with those masks on and, and working really hard and talk a little bit about the challenges and um, you know moving to Detroit taking the job here and uh, you know assembling a team uh, you know in, in, during the pandemic you know, um, it's been difficult to move in the middle of a pandemic to get a new job, um, to have a new opportunity. And I think the opportunity is what makes you humble, makes you grateful um, to just hit the ground running. Um, I'm so pleased that the team that I received, you know, we, we've, it's all new. We've got to piece it together just yet, but I couldn't be more pleased with the effort that I'm getting, the buy-in, having a wonderful staff that understands the vision and the mission um, is, is just really, really exciting couple uh, weeks away from first game, uh, pretty exciting. Uh, just talk about practices. You guys have been going for a while. Just talk about how they're going. You know, the practices are going really well. We're learning a lot of new concepts, playing at a great 
fast pace. I think that's the most overwhelming thing for our student athletes is they haven't really pushed this this fast and trying to not turn the ball over. Um, we talked in one of our prior interviews about trying to get those turnovers down mm -hmm. um, and trying to get our assists up while playing fast and making it all work. Um, it's exciting to try to build something new here and we're on to something. Uh, for fans that have not seen your, your teams play, what, what, what can they expect? You know, they can expect a fast up-tempo pace, you know, in-your-face defense. We're going to try to press some. That's new because I don't think this team changed defenses very much. So we're going to try to keep teams off balance by doing and showing different things um, and really just looking to score the ball more. This team averaged 57 points a game. We like to be in the upper 60s, 70s. Uh, IUPUI, who won the league, averaged 71 points a game. So there's a little gap there that, that Detroit Mercy has to reach. And as we add new pieces, as we see the, the pieces that we have grow, I think we're moving in the right direction. What's, uh, what's one thing that uh, fans may not know about you, a uh, hidden talent or skill that uh, you, you want to share with everybody? Let me tell you something. I am a singer in my own right. <laughs> maybe only in the shower, maybe only at home, but I'm a legend in my own mind. Um, <laughs> If you ever just come by the office, I'm probably humming or singing. And I think that's something that's been in my spirit. But I've never had a chance to um, explore that because I'm coaching. And coaches rarely have voices. So the singing thing kind of is on the back burner. But um, just a hobby, something I really, really enjoy doing. Let's talk a little bit about the schedule this year. Uh, it's going to be a little different with um, a lot of back-to-back -back games, uh, especially during the league season. Just talk about the challenges that presents. You know, we've got a great non-conference schedule, three games at home, open with Xavier, um, and then Indiana State, um, go to Michigan State, Toledo, and then back home at uh, with Western Michigan. I love our chances in those games. I mean, if we had a few games in there that we could win, we're really hoping that maybe we can get and tie the three wins that the team had overall last year, but in the preseason. Yeah. Um, will that happen? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but then you've got the back-to-back -back games in the Horizon League, which will be really tough, especially when you have a young team, a new team, maybe not as much depth as some of the other teams in the conference. Just to go 40 minutes a night back-to-back is going to be really tough on the kids. But um, just to have a season, I think the kids are excited to get going, uh, play against another opponent other than ourselves, and just kind of see where we are. Coach, what, what's uh, one thing that you want your team to hang their hat on this year when you're playing games? You know, our defense and rebounding. I, I want us to be one of the top defensive teams in the league. I think our offense will be an extension of our defense. I think that if we can get after people early in games, try to get a little cushion, turn them over, um, that bodes well for you to have a little cushion late in games. And, you know, just taking care of the basketball. I want to be a team that is thoughtful in our shot mm -hmm. selection, thoughtful in the passes that we make, you know, just not turning the ball over to the other team and the other team didn't earn it. That's something we're working on very hard in practice, but kind of those are the things. It's around the defensive take care of the ball theme, which I think will lead to greater offense. Coach, we're, uh, we're looking forward to, to watching you play this year. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. More with uh, Titan Basketball Media Day right after this. Back at Detroit Mercy Media Day, joined by Antoine Davis now. Antoine, you know, first question we have to ask is, you know, two years in, 1,500 points scoring. I mean, could you have thought, you know, coming onto campus a couple of years ago that you'd be basically 800 points away from the school record in scoring so far? Um, no, to be honest. I, uh, I mean, I expected out of myself because of who I am. I put the work in. And so, but to be honest, this is honestly like a, it's a blessing. I was just um, proud of myself of the work that I put in, proud of the people around me that supported me throughout uh, the last five, six years of me just working hard. You're talking about the work you put in. It's been well documented, the amount of shots you put up, the practice time you put in. You know, w you know, with the pandemic and obviously maybe a little bit less practice time here with everything going on, you know, how hard is it to, to, you know, to keep that consistent work ethic going since everything's been going on? Um, it's been a little hard, but over the last, since we left in March, I've had a, a little gym that I've been able to go to and be isolated by myself and maybe a couple other people to work out with me. And we may not be able to get like two, 3,000 shots because there's not a gun machine in there or whatever, but we get, we did get like a lot of good work in when we were out there. You know, you're already preseason first, uh, first team All-Horizon League. 
obviously a candidate for the Jerry West Award. Um, I know I've talked to you about this before, but you know, once again, when you see the names on that list and you see that Mason is recognizing, you know, you, a player from quote unquote a mid major school, mm -hmm. you know, how does that feel? Well, it feels good to be, especially with people that are from, you know, really big schools and stuff like that, like the Big Ten schools, ACC. It's good to have my name as a mid major involved with all those big names and big name schools. Uh, you know, first three weeks, you know, three, four weeks of practice going on here. You know, what has been that mentality in practice so far? Um, the mentality has been just to work hard and attention to detail and just knowing what we're supposed to do, knowing where we're supposed to be at on the court on offense, knowing we're supposed to be at on defense and just locking in on the little things to get us good as a team. You know, when you, when you talk about, um, you know, obviously son of head coach Mike Davis, uh, you know, continually, you know, new players being brought into the system. You know, this year, you know, seven new players. Do you, do you feel like you have to be a leader out there? Like you have to go out there and explain, hey, th this is what my dad wants. This is what he wants to see because you obviously are going to know your dad better than any of the players on the court. So what is it like being that leader and just helping these new guys adapt to the system? Um, it's been good. They've been really listening to what I've been saying and been really taking it in because sometimes it can be hard coming from my dad because he's such a – you know, sometimes he can be a really hard dude to like really talk to about certain stuff, but he's a really good coach at the same time. So they come and look, they come to me because they know that I know most of the stuff and know everything. And I just have stepped up since my freshman and sophomore year, especially as a leader for this team. And you know, they don't know that too. I mean, obviously people see that the passion that Coach Davis has, you know, on the sidelines coaching and, you know, what he does in practice. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm here to say this too is that he is. He is as hard as, as on you as he is on who would ever be considered the last man on, on the roster. I mean, mm -hmm. he goes out there and he wants everyone to perform, you know, you know, to, to their cap, you know, to, to their utmost capabilities. I mean, you know, what is that like in practice? That hey, he's going to get on you. He's he's going to get on everybody. It's it's not just a you know a father son thing. It, it, it's on everybody. Oh yeah, he's. It doesn't matter if he's <laughs> he's your um he's your kid or not, he's going to get on you regardless. He just wants to see you do good and just see you grow and just because he knows how much potential you have and how much everything that you got and how know why you're here and stuff like that. And so he just wants to get the best out of you and push you to the max. You know, we, we talked about before, you know, you're already at 1,500 points scoring. Do you know how many points your dad scored in college? No, I actually do not. So you're, 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 he, he scored about 1,300 points in college, so you got him beat there. Uh -huh. You know, when he talks about his college days, wh what does he tell you about the most? He tells me that he was, like, he won the, I think he won the defensive award or the hustle, not the defense, the hustle award for the last four years, which tells you a lot about how he is now even and how he was back then. It's like it's the same mentality of just working hard and just, head down and always working and stuff like that so all right a couple of rapid fire questions here to end this here if Antoine Davis had an emoji what would it be it's the butterfly emoji I always use that emoji that's my favorite one and then you know Antoine Davis if you had to create your perfect four NBA guys around you you're playing in the NBA you're starting who are those four guys around you um Well, as long as LeBron's out there, I really you can put three other guys out there with me. Cause I can play on that team then? Yeah, you can play on that team. Just yeah. put LeBron out there, and we're all going to be good. <laughs> you know, last thing is, who's the funniest guy on the team and why? <laughs> oh, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of characters, really. Is that good or bad? <laughs> That's a good thing. It's a good thing because they're funny. But I think Torian is the funniest because <laughs> you just don't know what you're going to expect from Torian half the time. Okay. Easy character. That's a good segue because we <laughs> will we will talk to Torian Thompson coming up next. Back in Detroit Mercy Media Day right after this. Back with Detroit Mercy Media Day. We got Torian Thompson, one of the new transfers to the Detroit Mercy basketball program. Torian, great to have you. We're going to start off with this. We just talked to Antoine Davis. He said you were the funniest guy on the team. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Why is that? Stand out. <laughs> We also heard you had the strongest TikTok game. What is that about? I don't have a TikTok. He's no just playing. TikTok? We got to do some investigating there. Tony, you know, talking about the season here, obviously, you know, new program here. We know what have, uh, you know, what have you uh, seen from the Detroit Mercy basketball program the last three weeks in practice? 
Coach Davis's uh, coach style is really unique, man. And, um, you know, he has a lot of knowledge in the game. And I could really grow from his teaching and, you know, everything he brings to the table as a coach. You know, you've played for some great coaches. You know, Bob Hurley in college, you know, uh, Jim Beheim up at Syracuse, Kevin Willard at Seton Hall. So, I mean, you know, when you, when you talk about the basketball knowledge these coaches have given you, I mean, you know, what is it like to play with, you know, for all these coaches? I mean, that's got to help. Uh, man, this is, let me tell you something, man. Like, the coaches I've played with, they're great, man. Great. You know, if you had to tell the Detroit Mercy basketball, you know, community about Torian Thompson and his game, you know, before we get to see it, you know, what, what do you bring to the table? Uh, I just bring a lot of energy, man. I work hard, man, and uh, 100% play like it's my last time every single day. That's what those coaches told me. They said, when is your last chance to play? You want to give it all you got. So play like that every time because you never know when the ball is going to stop bouncing. You know, so I try to take those teachers with me to the head every single day. And uh, I take this, this game is my life, man, so. You know, growing up, you know, growing up in New York City, obviously you played in upstate New York at Syracuse, out in Jersey, at Seton Hall, now in Detroit. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, what is uh, what has it been like being out here in Detroit? You know, coming from those places. Detroit's cool, different. Um, that's the blessing. That's the good thing about basketball. It takes you all around. It takes you really like everywhere around the world. Like you get to see everything. Uh, you know, playing you know for some of the programs that you did play for. You know, played in NCAA tournaments and stuff like that. That's obviously the goal of this program, the goal of these players. You know, what, do you, what did you tell some of these players? Like, hey, I, I, I've been to the NCAA tournament. I know what it takes to work hard as a team to, you know, to get to that level day in and day out. Well, you know, what, do you, what do you tell some of these other younger guys? Just keep their head on straight. You know, try not to fall into the traps. Um, listen to your parents. You know, ego is a big thing in this business. You know, you got to learn how to uh, be a sponge, take criticism. Uh, on the court, you always try to be right, but off the court, you have to learn. If you're not always right, you have to take things slow. Just try to be the best you could be, and nobody's perfect. If there was a Torian Thompson emoji, what would it be? Ooh, uh, probably the winking one with the tongue out. <laughs> that is stealing from another teammate there. Um, if you had to put four guys around you, you're playing in the NBA here in a couple of years. If you had to put four guys around you, who would they be? Trey My Waters, Anthony Davis. Marcus Cousins, LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Torian Thompson. Back at you, Detroit Mercy Media Day. Back here, uh, Titan Basketball Media Day with uh, Allie Reif. Uh, Allie, how you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Allie, you're in your uh, your senior year. Is it kind of hard to believe that you're already in your fourth year of college basketball? Yes, it's crazy how <laughs> fast it's gone. But yeah, you got a new coach this year, Coach Gilbert. Just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how practices have been uh, under coach. Yeah, Coach Gilbert, she's great. She knows what she's doing. Um, the one thing that I really love about her is how much um, she expects out of this team and how much discipline comes with that. And um, it's I feel like it's really changed a, a course with this team and it's helped a lot just with us improving as a unit. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, last season and and and, uh, and just was there a part of your game that you, you thought you thrived on and, and, and what's a piece of your game that you're, you're still working on? Um, so last season, I thought I did a great job just being aggressive um, on both ends of the court. But this season, I feel like I need to amp it up with that and, um, you know, do a better job of nailing those uh, trail threes and also um, trying to get more offensive boards as well so we can keep the ball on the offensive side and get uh, get more uh, uh, balls in the basket. But I mean, yeah, just trying to outwork our, our opponent. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of our team came back from last year, mm -hmm. uh, just lost uh, one starter. And then we brought in some new pieces, just talk about, uh, you know, how everybody's meshing together and, and how the team chemistry is. Yeah, I feel like the team chemistry, it's it's um, it's great. It's moving in the right direction. Um, you know, we're still kind of getting to know each other, um, still learning new things about each other, which is actually, it's fun and it's, it's exciting. But these newcomers are really great. Um, Norman, uh, she's a great, quick little guard. <laughs> she's very crafty, very quick. 
you gotta you gotta watch her she'll get you <laughs> stay on your toes yeah stay on your toes <laughs> and some um uh samaya she's a great forward for us she's very aggressive um she's just a great hard worker she'll outwork anybody um uh, kayla she's doing a great job running uh the point guard position and um just learning the spots in her role and uh, I feel like we're doing a pretty good job coming together and just trying to connect on the court. So, yeah, it's going pretty great. Good, good. Um, you know, you're getting towards the end of, uh, you know, college basketball. And, you know, uh, what are some of your career aspirations for when, you know, basketball I is done for you? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I've thought about playing overseas um, after this, but I'm not sure if that's something I still want to do because of the whole pandemic yep, and everything. Yep. But um, uh, my family, actually, uh, we own our own business, um, sandblasting and paint cement trucks. It's just a small business, but that might be something I'll get into or um, farming as well back at home. But I think I'd rather stay close to home. <laughs> I'm a home girl, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, just who is one person um, or a couple people that you look up to? It could be in basketball or out outside of basketball. Um, definitely my parents, um, but uh, I would have to say also um, a girl named Darby Maggard. She's somebody who I have like worked out with throughout my whole life, somebody I grew up with. She's just a great person, great human being to, to be around. And I mean, she's just somebody who, um, you know, I always wanna be a better person just because of how she acts and how she treats others, so yeah. Good. Well, Allie, we're looking forward to seeing you on the court, and thanks for taking the time today. Yeah, thank you. More with uh, Titan Basketball Media Day right after this. All right, back at Media Day, joined by Chris Brandon. Chris Brandon, uh, obviously, you know, you had a great year last year, but starting off this year, a little bit of injury. So first off, tell the fans, where are you with the injury? Um, well, right now, I went to the, I went to the doctor last Friday. They said it's healing well, but it's not gonna be done for about another three weeks. So I gotta go in and see if it's, I should be, I should be back in about three, three weeks, three and a half weeks, two and a half. You know, it looks like you might miss the season opener here at Kentucky. I mean, is that kind of a game that's like, you know, I, I definitely want to get back for that. Is that more of a motivation or if it's, or is it more, hey, I gotta get back for Horizon when you play? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to play the Kentucky game because my, uh, my cousin just got a job there, John, not John Lucas, Jay Lucas. So it'll be a really nice play against them. My family can come, come out. And, you know, real good competition up there. But, yeah, I'm pretty upset I missed that one. And those those next three games, actually, I was looking forward to those. But, yeah, I think we should do well against them, though. We have a pretty good team. You know, we'll, you know, we'll try to keep it a little bit more positive here. But first, a little bit more negative first. Okay. Preseason poll, Detroit Mercy picked to finish ninth. The team has been working really hard here, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks. When you see a, you know, a preseason poll like that, does it give extra motivation? You know, wh what's kind of the team mentality when you see that preseason poll come out? I mean, well, to be honest, I, I don't really pay. We don't, I don't think we pay that much attention to it. You know, just kind of work to get to the next level and you know prove everybody wrong. You know, because we we've been you know that way before. We come out and have some surprises, but I feel like this year we have the team that like, make that next step. You know, what I'm saying to get farther than we did the past years. I've been here. All member of the all defensive team last year. Now we do have to ask a couple of questions here about that. Number one, you're the most one of the most athletic players in the Horizon League. Obviously, everyone sees your dunking capability and your, your block shots, member of the all-defensive team. Is it better to block a shot or better for a breakaway dunk? What do you got? Uh, breakaway dunk. Why is that? Uh, you know, breakaway dunk, you get, give your team a little, little bit more momentum, the excitement, stuff like that. You know, put, put, some, put some points on the board. Block shot, you know, the other team might get it, you might get it, who knows. Uh, when you talk about some, you know, some of your defensive prowess, uh, you know, a lot of it is just really making up ground. Once again, you're one of the most athletic players. Um, you know, what, what, what does coach tell you about your, your athleticism? You know, what do you have to do more of uh, to really display that more this year? Uh, just play with more energy, um, be more consistent with it. Cause you know, some, sometimes last year I was kind of lackadaisical sometimes during the games where I have a spurt and I kind of drop off. So just kind of stay at the consistent rate that, you know, to be, you know, the best I can be throughout the games. Uh, you know, we were talking about, you know, practicing the last couple of weeks, obviously with the whole pandemic and, and the COVID situation, I don't know what the summer was like for you. Uh, you know, with everything going down in the spring, you know, what, what was the, well, you know, what was the spring, what was the summer like for Chris, Brand Chris Brandon during this pandemic? Uh, well, during the pandemic, things didn't really pretty much change. You know, um, I was able to get, get, go to the gym, work out with some great competition, 
do some overseas, do it in the league. So it was, it was real fun. Things didn't really change. I feel like it got better during the pandemic. Um, yeah, the most people can say. I, I had fun. It was, it, was a lot, it was a lot of fun. I got a lot of work in. All right, a couple of really, really uh, you know, tough questions here to end us out here. Number one, Chris Brandon had his own emoji. What would it be? Uh, my own emoji. Oh, that's tough. I would say I would say the smile emoji, the smile emoji. All right, number two, warm, you know your best warm up music, a couple of artists. Who would it be? Um, J Cole, Mozzie, and Dirk. All right, last question. Chris Brandon was the starting four in the NBA. You want to be a three? Which one you want to be? Uh, well, I'm more well right now. I'm more so four three, but when I get to the league, probably most most likely three position. Three positions? Transition. Right. So give me the other four guys around you. You're building the perfect NBA team. Chris Brandon's the three. Who are the other four guys around you? Um, ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, I say a D book. Um, Brian. Tough one. KD. I got one more. Yeah, one more. Uh, damn, that's tough, that's tough, that's tough, that's tough, that's tough. Mm, I go with Kawhi. Kawhi, I mean, that, that sounds like a perfect NBA team. You heard it, a couple of years in the NBA, he's got his four free agents around him. Back with Detroit Mercy Media Day right after this. Back here at Titan Basketball Media Day with sophomore Bridget Fox. Bridget, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Great. Bridget, you saw a lot of time during your freshman year, uh, you know, played in all 30 games, uh, really came on during the Horizon League season. Um, just talk about one thing that you learned uh, during that, that first year. Um, well, I mean, it was definitely an adjustment from high school, as I feel like everyone's is. Um, the pace of the game was definitely something I had to adjust to, but really just like being patient with your shots, working hard, because it's not, like again, it's like not like high school, so just really like having to work the ball and, you know, just supporting your teammates, learning how to balance, you know, college and basketball right. overall. So it really helped me a lot. What's, uh, what's one thing that you're working on and, and improving upon uh, heading into this, this uh, season? Um, something I really want to do is I want to try to get some double doubles. I was pretty close last year to get in some, but I never fully accomplished that. So definitely like working on rebounding and scoring and just, you know, trying to focus on that goal. Um, you're, you have had a lot of family members play, you know, collegiate sports, yeah. um, including basketball. Your dad played basketball in, in college. Uh, you know, what, what kind of advice have they given you, uh, you know, as you uh, came here to Detroit Mercy? Um, a lot. Uh, <laughs> but um, one of the main things is just, the, you know, to trust the process stay patient, mainly that, especially as a freshman, like, you know, your time will come. And just to not not get so, like, you know, worked up over mistakes to always just, because everything will work out the way it's supposed to, and just always work hard and do what you got to do to be the best you can. Can you take your, uh, take your dad in a game of one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, <laughs> I probably could if we were actually, like, running and stuff because he would get pretty tired. But sometimes he'll just back me down and score on me just to show, you know, that he still got it. <laughs> um, now, what, what did you do during this pandemic, uh, you know, to just, you know, keep your basketball skills uh, sharp and, and, and just stay ready? Oh, gosh. Well, a lot of things, like, for being in shape, ran ran a lot you know I think that's what everyone did ran a lot of hills <laughs> and stuff like that so my sister who actually runs track in college she was helping me run and stuff like that but for basketball you know any outside hoops I could go to one of the ones actually right outside my house though like at an elementary school they took off nice. the rims so oh, people wow. couldn't shoot there so <laughs> yeah. that was that sucked but um <laughs> you know just try to do the best I could I know Pennsylvania like cleared up faster than like Michigan and stuff so after a while, I got to get back into a real gym and, you know, work out with my dad and stuff. But Good. it was a struggle at first when, you know. Yeah, for sure. Had to be outside <laughs> or just, just running was. <laughs> it's been a tough year. Something sure. I didn't like doing. Yep, yep. Um, new coach this year, Co Coach Gilbert. Just talk mm -hmm. a little bit about playing under her so far and, and how practices are going. Yeah, I, I really like Coach Gilbert. I really enjoy her practices. You know, they're pretty intense. Definitely a change of pace from last year, which is something I really think we need it and it, it'll definitely put us ahead with all the hard work we're doing in practice but 
she's a great she's a great coach, great person. I really I really enjoy um, playing for her, and I can't wait to see what happens this year. Great. Um, and then just talk a little bit about you know somebody that you look up to. Um, it could be in basketball or outside of basketball. Um, well, obviously, I really look up to my dad. Um, just as we're very, very similar, he knows he's probably the only person who like under he understands me the most out of anyone. He's really always, you know, there for me. Knows how to talk me down if I get worked up over everything. <laughs> um, but as far as like a professional player, I look up to. I really look up to Kevin Love because I feel like. We're kind of similar players, but then again, everything he's done for like, you know, mental, mm -hmm. mental illness and stuff when it comes to, you know, being an athlete and how to deal with that. So he's another person I look up to. It's a good role model for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, last question, just uh, you've been on the team a couple of years here and we've got some new players this year. Just who is uh, the funniest player on the, currently on the team? The funniest player to me, um, definitely Norman, Alicia <laughs> Norman. She is just... No matter what she's doing, she's always funny. Even if she's not trying to be funny, she's just an overall funny person. But I really enjoyed all the new girls. We all get along great. So, um, yeah. <laughs> great. Bridget, thanks for the time. We're looking forward to seeing you this yeah, year. Yeah, thank you. More right after this. Back at Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day, joined now by Brad Calipari. Brad, obviously, your second year with the Titans here, you know, the rad grad transfer with two years. Uh, you know, just talk about overall, you know, that first year, what you saw out of yourself. Um, you know, being my first year actually playing, um, you know, it was good to be able to get out on the court and actually make a contribution. Um, you know, showing my ability to shoot the ball at a high level was uh, something I was proud of myself with because I knew how high of a level I shoot the ball at, but being able to do it against different players at a high level is uh, something that, you know, was needed to be shown. You know, last year, you know, you really started to get into that groove. Uh, you know, you know, had the, you know, 20 point game versus Toledo. Um, you know, then got a little, uh, you know, got sick, missed a couple of weeks after that. I mean, how, you know, how much was that a down just to like, hey, I'm playing now, I'm, you know, I'm getting my you know, opportunity. And then, you know, the sickness caused you to, you know, miss a couple of weeks. I mean, how, how, how bad was that to go through that and then get back into the motions of playing? I mean, things happen, you know, adversity hits you and you just got to, get back up, keep going. Um, you know, some you can't let it wear on you mentally. Uh, just being able to get back up and and go play, you know, just like you haven't missed a couple weeks is hard. You have to, like I said, just stay mentally prepared and, you know, physically your body will get back into it. But I mean, mentally having the toughness just to stay ready is the most important part. You know, you know, last couple of weeks of practice here, you know, a lot of new guys on the team this year, you know, seven new guys, you know, what has practice been like? What has the emotions been like so far? Um, we've been practicing at a high level. It's been very competitive. You know, guys get after it. And then, you know, after, you know, everybody in the locker room is good with each other. And that's, you know, something that's important, being able to go at each other's necks on the court. And then as soon as you step out, everybody's everybody's friends and teammates still. But um, everybody's pushing each other to get better. And, you know, it's been good energy on and off the court. You know, individually, you know, you talk about your shooting prowess. You know, what what's the biggest thing, you know, you felt that you need to work on from last season going into this season? Um, just ball handling, conditioning, just being in the best shape I can be. Um, that's always going to be something that's important, you know, at a high level. Just for me, the way I have to shoot the ball, you know, I have to be able to run as much as I can. I have to be able to outrun people, you know, come off screens, and that's going to be something that's always going to be something that you just have to keep pursuing. You know, you can never be in, in good enough shape. There's always a, another level you can take it to. And obviously, you know this question's coming. You know, the season's about to start here. What is it going to be like playing against Richmond, that first season opener? Um, you know. And then obviously another team after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Richmond's a very good team. You know, the what is it, three teams we play down there, are, you know, they're all good. So it's going to be a good challenge, you know, opening the season with – a team that plays at a high level, you know, it's always something that's going to be a challenge. But um, if we prepare and keep practicing at a high level and, you know, tighten up, be sharp, I mean, give it our best shot. You know, the, the game with Kentucky, obviously with your dad there. But, you know, regardless of, you know, the other family factor, you just transferring there. Is there anything that you can bring, you know, that you can bring over here when, you know, when you're talking about tendencies that, 
the offensive, you know, offensive, defensive, coaches' mindset? Is there anything that a transfer can bring over to the table when you're taking on a former team? Uh, no, not really, because you know they have a different team every year. They usually bring in six, five, six, seven guys. You know, the offense changes every year. The defense changes every year. It was it my second year? They played some two-three zone. Last year they didn't play any zone. You know. It's just it switches every year, so I mean, there's not really much you can do. Although I was there three years, I still haven't seen it all, even though I saw a lot. But um, you know, like I said, it's a different team this year, so they have a lot of length and a lot of skill, and it's nothing that you know I've seen. Um, so you know, it's kind of up in the air for what they're going to do. Who's more excited for that game, you, your dad, or your mom? Probably my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely. Uh, you know, and just, you know, last couple of questions here. If there was a Brad Calipari uh, emoji, what would it be? Ooh, probably the wink with the tongue out. If you had to pick the other four guys around you in the NBA, who would it be playing around you? Hmm. Uh, probably, let say, Fox, D-Book, AD. What's that, three? Marcus. And the last one, last question on the team: Who has the strongest TikTok game? Oh man, you all do TikTok? It would be Torian. If yeah. anybody, it would, I don't know if he has TikTok, but <laughs> if he had a TikTok, it would be Torian. So that's Brad Calipari. We we'll rack right with more with Detroit Mercy Media Day. Back here at uh, Titan Basketball Media Day with uh, one of the new uh, Titans, uh, Alicia Norman. Alicia, how, how we doing? I'm good. You've played some games in here before. Just talk about, uh, you know, pl you're playing uh, in high school in Callahan Hall. Um, well, in the PSO, like, the championship is usually here. And fortunately, every year my team made it to the championship, and we <laughs> won every game here. So it's so pretty you, cool. You've, you've done pretty well here. Yep. Um, and then – You've done you did well last year too at Macomb Community College. Just talk a little bit about you guys were 32 and 0. Just talk about the, the team you had there and, and and how you guys did. Um, to me that team was like one of the most special teams to me because we were like compatible on the court, off the court, never had any problems. We worked hard, like we were just a good group together as a whole. So that's what made us good to me. And and, and talk about. The transition to playing, uh, you know, Division One basketball and, and what that what that has been like for you so far. Um, it's been it's been going pretty well. Um, I'm a little familiar with Coach Gilbert, so I know she like pushes you. So she's been pushing me to work hard. It's been going pretty good. For fans that uh, haven't seen you, you know, on the court play, uh, just tell them what kind of player you are and, and what what you uh, take pride in on the court. Well, I take pride mostly in my speed and my hustle. Like, I'm very fast. I get good handles, and I play good defense, like on ball pressure. And then, what are what's a skill that you're you're still working on, or, or you want to improve upon? Oh, uh, I would say probably three, my three pointer, because people like to back off me because I'm fast. <laughs> so, but I've been working on it, so I'm ready. And then, how how have uh you know how have practice has been going under under Coach Gilbert? I've been pretty good. She's been pushing us to work hard, and then it looks pretty good so far. Like the team, we look good. I'm excited to see what we become. Um, if there was a sport that, if you weren't playing basketball, what sport would you be playing? Soccer. Soccer. Okay. Yes. Did you play? Did you play in high school? Um, unfortunately, no. I played in uh, elementary school and middle school, but I couldn't play in high school because they didn't have a team. Okay. But I love soccer. It's pretty good. I De think. Definitely utilize that speed in yes. that sport. Excited. A favorite position in soccer? I, I play forward. Okay. Yeah. Goal scorer. <laughs> um, and then it's got to be cool. You know, there's there's some um, a lot of players on this team that are from the Metro Detroit area. Uh -huh. uh, just talk about that and how cool it's to it is to play for you know your hometown team, hometown college team. Um, actually, I'm familiar with all the players that are from this area. I play AU with Max and Kayla, and Samaya was in my league for, at my JUCO. So just pretty cool to have all you guys yeah. together. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of people have said that you're the, the funniest on the team so far, but uh, if you had to pick somebody that, that was funny on the team, who, who would it be? Um, probably Markaya because every time I'm, she just makes me laugh. Like every time <laughs> I'm around her, I just laugh. <laughs> okay. And then uh, last question here for you. Um, 
if you had to pick somebody, it could be in basketball or outside of basketball that you look up to, who would that person be? LeBron James. Okay. Great answer, right? <laughs> yeah. We, we're looking forward to, to seeing your first season here, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. More on Titan Basketball Media Day right after this. All right, back at Detroit Mercy Media Day. Another new Titan to their program this year, Markel Frazier. You know, transfer from Idaho, graduate transfer. Uh, you know, one thing, Markel, coming into this program, it, as a graduate transfer, you had a chance to go to a lot of different places. You know, why did you pick Detroit Mercy? Uh, honestly, the first reason why I chose Detroit Mercy was, oh, it had to be coach. Uh, coach Davis is probably one of the most unique coaches that I've had throughout my college experience, and he he showed me that he's going to be able to help push me to the next level. So I decided to trust him to come here. You know, you know, you're obviously from Canada, from uh, you know, right in the Toronto area, I believe. Yeah. How far is that from Detroit? I mean, it's only a couple uh, hours. Three. Right? It's only a three-hour drive. So and this summer we're supposed to we were supposed to go to Toronto to play a few games, but COVID hit. So that was a uh, another yeah. reason. <laughs> You know, you're talking about yourself, you know, obviously, you know, come from Canada, VCU as a freshman, um, you know, obviously playing out here in Idaho and Detroit, and, you know, now here in the Motor City at Detroit Mercy. I mean, a lot of different communities, I guess, you've been a part of. You know, what, mm -hmm. you know, what's it like, you know, coming from a city, you know, going out to, like, you know, you know, uh, rural area, you know, rural areas and then back to the city? I mean, what are the, these experiences been like for you? Uh, honestly, I've just been trying to follow my dreams, you know, wherever the basketball takes me, I go. So I'm not really uh, – too much of a social person I'd rather like to stay to myself and just stay in the gym and just get prepared for the season so it doesn't matter what atmosphere I'm in I just like to get to work and just get prepared for the season you know getting ready for the you know the season here so far obviously you've been able to you know uh you know just you know some of the summer workouts and then obviously now back into practice last couple of weeks what has this team really been working hard you know what has this team really been working hard and working for these last couple of weeks Oh, uh, well, all honesty, uh, a lot of us weren't here in the summer due to COVID and just us trying to figure out what we're doing transferring wise. So all honesty, I believe our team chemistry is something that we are working on every day and we're going to have to continue to work on that. And we've been making a lot of strides on and off the court with our chemistry. And I believe that's going to come a long way. We are really talented. It's probably the one of the most deepest teams I've been on personally. So offensively, we're there, but just our chemistry and defense is m most of what we've been working on. Is it kind of weird for you being a graduate transfer, so, you know, you're a fifth-year college player, but you're also like a newcomer on the team. So is it hard kind of transitioning from being that newcomer and asking questions to trying to maybe be that, you know, that veteran leader out there as well? What's that kind of transition like in practice? Uh, it's kind of hard, but... If you watch film, if you watch a lot of film, you like, like to break stuff down, it's easier to kind of figure out what coach kind of wants. So as long as you have that open, open communication with all the coaches, it's a lot easier just to figure out what they really want within the program. Coach Davis, I've kind of heard he watches film, you know, a, a little bit here and there. Oh, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> you know, if you had to tell the Detroit Mercy community about the type of player they're going to see out there with you, you know, what would you tell them? Oh, I mean, I do it all. Like, I pass, rebound, t facilitate. I do, I try to do everything. I don't try to keep my game to one thing. Like, I could play one through three, one through four. I could do whatever the team needs me to do. Whatever coach asks me to do, I'm going to do it. And, t yeah, that's all I got to say. <laughs> so, you know, a couple of, you know, good, fun questions now. If Markel Frazier had an emoji, what would it be? Oh, I would say hard eyes because, you know, I'm beautiful. <laughs> it's a shame we're wearing these masks, isn't it? I know. You can't see. You can't see. <laughs> um, you know, your favorite warm-up music, getting ready for a game, what do you like to listen to? Oh, that's tough. Right now, I'd have to say G Herbo. <laughs> that's my go-to right now. You know, and I've asked, you know, a lot of guys this question so far. You're playing in the NBA here in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the starter point guard. Who are those four guys around you? Oh. Oh. Damn. Got me. You got me on that one. Uh, <sighs> Have to go with LeBron. LeBron. 
Oh my gosh. That's a hard one. LeBron Kwai. Big. Mm, I'm with Embiid. Then lastly, I need a shooter. I can't think of one. I can't think of one. A lot of people like Harden. It, oh, shoot, Harden. Yeah, let me go with Harden. All right. <laughs> you, know, you know, last question. You know, being from Toronto, you, did you grow up a Raptors fan? Uh, well, I grew up in Hamilton, Hamilton, Ontario. It's mm. like 45 minutes outside of Toronto. Uh, Raptors, I was always a Carmelo fan. Mm. So wherever Carmelo Anthony was, I was. <laughs> so you, you didn't get a chance to bask in the glory of the Raptors championship, did you? Oh, no, <laughs> I was actually, I was home for that. So I... <laughs> I got to experience it. It was a <laughs> heck of an experience, but I've never really been too big on the Raptors, to be honest with you. So, hey, you know what? Let's bring that championship here to Detroit Mercy instead. So. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Markel Fraser, the Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day, back after this. Back here, Titan Basketball Media Day with uh, sophomore Abby McDowell. Abby, how are we doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you're in your second year now, and just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, transition from first year to second year. You know, what did you learn in that first year? Um, I definitely learned a lot in my first year. I think coming in, I realized um, just what it takes to play at this level, and I really had to elevate how much work I was putting in. And I think it showed this off season. I was putting in probably about two to three hours every single day. So I mean, that's just what it takes to play at this level. So I learned that pretty quick. But yeah. What what is uh, is there a piece of your game that you're you're kind of honing in and, work, and working on the most right now? Um, so I'm a shooter. So when you're a shooter, you have to shoot pretty much <laughs> all the time. It doesn't matter how good you get. You just have to keep doing it. So I've been shooting a lot this off season. I worked a ton on my ball handling. I've noticed it, it feels a lot tighter this year. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, talk talk a little bit about what you did during the the, the pandemic um, and how you how you guys stayed close as a team even you know when you guys couldn't see each other that much. Um, so we did a lot of Zoom calls. I think we had at least like two a week. We had a group chat going on Snapchat and then iMessage, and we were just sending each other funny things and stuff. So we didn't. It was kind of tough because we had quite a few new girls coming in too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we've adjusted really well meeting them in person. And I think all like all the Zoom calls we did, they really really helped. And obviously, uh, you know, new coaching staff too, Coach Gilbert. Just talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what you've learned from her so far and, and how practices have been. I think Coach Gilbert, she talks a lot about excellence. And it, it doesn't just stay on the court. She demands a lot of things on the court, and it's what we need. And But off the court, she just demands, you know, good grades, be a good person, have a good attitude. So it's just been a very well-rounded, I feel like I'm becoming a very well-rounded person under her. And um, shoot, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, I mean that, that's, a, that's a great answer. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've been asking everybody to talk about, uh, you know, you have a person in basketball or outside of basketball that you look up to. Um, I would definitely say my high school coach, um, Mrs. Zajac. So she came in my junior year of high school, and she's just been someone who I look up to a lot. She's a really powerful woman. She has four kids. She's doing an amazing job coaching high school basketball. I've never seen anyone, <laughs> but Coach Gilbert definitely rivals her. <laughs> Coach Gilbert might take the cake on this, but she's so passionate about basketball. She'd be telling us like, oh, I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking about our game. I was up till two in the morning. <laughs> she's still got tea. She's still got to take care of her kids. So yeah, she's, she just showed me you know, how to work hard and how to be passionate. It sounds like a, a wonderful person to, to look up to. Mm -hmm. um, been asking everybody as well, uh, funniest teammate on the team, uh, a lot of returners, but we got some new new players as well. Who's the funniest on the team? Um, that's tough. Cause I know last year it was definitely Max, cause Marky started out pretty quiet, but Marky's hilarious. <laughs> um, Alicia Norman coming in, she's really really funny too. So I might have to give it to Marky right now though. And then uh, f final question here for you: Just talk about the challenges of uh, you know playing in a pandemic year with you know masks on. Um, you got you might be playing some back-to-back -back nights. Just talk about the, the challenges there this year. Um, so definitely the masks have been a bit of a challenge, but I think we've ad like adapted really well to it. And it's been like maybe a good conditioning aspect too. Um, but I think, you know, we've all taken a lot of responsibility with staying safe and making sure, you know, we try to not have COVID in our bubble. But um, I, think, I think it'll be interesting 
playing the back-to-back -back games because the only time we did that last year was Las Vegas. So I'm just hoping, you know, we don't get too tired and lots yeah, of hopefully things go well. Yeah, lots yeah. of conditioning. <laughs> well, Abby, we're, uh, we're looking forward, uh, you know, less than a couple of weeks here to the first game. Thanks for taking the time today. Yep, thank you. We'll be back with uh, more right after this. Back at Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day, I'm joined by freshman Kyle LeGreer, the men's basketball team. Kyle, we, 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 do, we do have to say this, you know, obviously being a freshman, this team, you know, a lot of veterans, a lot of veterans being brought in, uh, you know, so far you got head coach Mike Davis. What is it, you know, what has it been like to learn from not only the veterans, but from Coach Davis so far? Um, like you said, this team has a lot of veterans, and coach, with Coach Davis being uh, along with the veterans, it's, it's a good opportunity to learn, a good opportunity to watch and develop. Uh, especially being young, youngest dude on the team, it's a good opportunity to step back and watch watch greatness. You know, one, one thing about Coach Davis, though, is that he, he is kind of a guy that, you know, whoever is playing well, whoever knows the system, whoever, you know, it can perform the way he wants to perform, he's going to give him opportunity, not give him playing time. So you come into every day of practice going, I just need to show, you know, not only just learn, but if I show what I can do, you know, I know it's going to be recognized here. Right, it's all about uh, seizing the opportunity. If you get the opportunity, you got to make the most of it. You hate to be that guy that complains about not getting the opportunity, then when you get it, you don't perform. So just always being ready, being ready for your time. Obviously, being the local guy from Detroit, you know, from the Detroit area here, you know, what, you know, what made you choose to stay home and play for Detroit Mercy? Um, and part of the recruiting process, it was just, it was just a good opportunity where I could stay home and play for a team in a city that I've been been a part of my whole life. So. Just, I just saw this opportunity I couldn't pass up. You know, in practice so far, you know, what has been, you know, the team's mentality in practice so far? What have they been working on the most? Um, so it's a lot of new new players to the uh, to the program, and everybody just really getting getting to know each other. Everybody likes each other, and that's a good that's a good thing that teams always need that chemistry, and dudes just just getting a feel for each other every day, intensity. You know, it's been kind of you know kind of different. I mean, obviously. You know, you chose to come here. You're a fall signee. Um, in the summertime, there would have been probably a plenty of opportunities to come over here and play some open gym, get to know the guys even more before. But with the pandemic that, you know, with the pandemic that hit, how far behind does it put someone, you know, like any newcomers, especially freshmen, how far behind do you think, you, you know, you are compared to what a normal year would have been? So, like you said, a lot of, a lot of stuff with the pandemic, it, it hindered a lot of things. And those opportunities, I didn't get a chance to be a part of, like the open gyms. But it's a that's a time for you to work on yourself and work on your craft behind when the lights not on. So when the lights come on, it's ready. You ready to shine, ready to show what you got. So, I mean, as far as being set behind, I feel like it's just about all about how you how you handle that the adversity. Like nobody knew this was coming, but how you gonna handle it now that it's here? So I feel like I feel like I handled my part. You talking about you know the opportunity to shine when the camera's on you? You know, if you had to tell the Detroit Mercy community. You know, even though a lot of guys, you know, a lot of people, they know who you are being local. But if you had to tell them, you know, you know, those guys who don't know you, what is, uh, you know, what is your game about? What do you bring to the program? Uh, you know, and it's not all about the points. It's about how bringing that, bringing that fire, bringing that leadership. So just be ready for that, that fire, that dog. <laughs> well, you know, you had an opportunity to play some high school games in this building, you know, with the crowd. You know, what is it like playing in here in Callahan Hall with the crowd going? I mean, it's an old, you know, it's an old you know, venue, but that crowd is right on top of you. And, you know, I've been here during some, uh, during some big games, and when that crowd is going, there's nothing like it. Yeah, when that, that crowd gets going, it's, 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 it is a big, it's a big place, so it, it echoes, and you hear it for sure. The, the court will get to shaking, and the crowd, the crowd right up on you, so it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. You know, you, you know we got to end this with some funny stuff here now. <laughs> we want to know, who, who's the funniest guy on the team? Uh, funniest guy on the team? I don't know. I like to think I'm pretty funny, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't say a lot of jokes. But everybody, everybody do their part. Everybody got their fair share of jokes. It's all about who, who capitalizes on opportunity for real. Who's the best dancer on the team? Mm. I ain't really seen no dancing. I mean, uh, I Chris, see, Chris I might see, dance. I see a little some bit. dancing on TikToks. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might bust a move or two. I'm not doing. I can't do it right now, but. <laughs> Uh, I seen Chris Duck could dance a couple of times. The Bull might dance every once in a while. It's not good, but he'll he'll try. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so and yeah. And if there had to be, you know, one emoji that describes Kyle Greer, what would it be? Uh, fire. It'd be the fire. Lit. 
the fire and determination of freshman Kyle Greer. He's going to make his mark here at Detroit Mercy. Media Day, we'll be back after this. Back here at Titan Basketball Media Day, we're here with uh, sophomore guard Markaya McCormick. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, just talk a little bit, first of all, just what you did during the pandemic and just, uh, you know, how you guys stayed close as a team uh, during, you know, a, a trying time in, the, in our country this year. Yeah. Um, well, during the pandemic, obviously, it was, you know, a shock to be sent home. Uh, for me, personally, I just worked on getting conditioned, uh, staying in shape and uh, getting in the best shape possible. Uh, I haven't really touched as great a shape in these past few years, and that's what I worked on a lot. Um, just staying in the gym as much as possible. Ohio shut down uh, pretty tough, so I, it was kind of hard to get in the gym. But I, you know, I made my way and just focused on keeping my game tight. Um, played in all 30 games last year. Got a lot of experience as a freshman. Um, you know, what what was one thing that you were proud of? Uh, you know, in that first year. Um, I think I was just proud of. Mostly my maturity. Um, I came off a season-ending injury my senior year, so n not playing for a full year and then going straight into the collegiate game was uh, definitely a big step, and I, I definitely had to mature enough to, um, you know, get myself through it. Uh, and I'd say just the strength that it took to do that while recovering, going through the mental stages of recovery and a season-ending injury, it's, it was a big step, so... New coach this year, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Gilbert. Let's talk about uh, you know how practices have been going under her. Yeah, practices have been well. Um, she's definitely a change of pace. Um, we're learning a totally different game than we knew before. Um, me especially, you know, just becoming faster, quicker, and um, keeping my pace up. You know, I think I think what we have in store is very different than what a lot of people are gonna or have seen. And she's definitely changing the culture around, changing our mindset for the better. A lot of you guys are back from last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a young team last year, and then you guys brought in some uh, some new talented girls as well. Just talk about you know how everything is is meshing be between uh, you know the, the the newcomers and then the returners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're meshing well. Um, we're getting to know each other and what each what each person does on the court, and um, I think I think there's a lot a lot of good to come out of it. Uh, we're happy to have those four on the team, and I think it's going to be a good good season. You talked. You touched upon this a little bit, but uh, just is there one thing that you're focusing on that you want to get better at? You know, as you head into your sophomore season. Yeah, just staying more consistent, um, being patient on my shots, and just letting the game come to me. I know last year I may have rushed a lot, and just watching film and studying myself, I know that uh, it's you know certain things can seem rushed. And then, like I said, I'm in the best shape that I've been in in some years, so. I think my game will definitely be different based off of that, uh, probably be more comfortable. And then I'm picking up my defense a lot. Uh, coach is expecting me to play a lot of great defense, so I'm excited. I'm sure she loves that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so who is somebody that you look up to? Um, it could be in basketball or, or outside of the basketball realm. Who is somebody that you, you look up to? Uh? Um, I look up to my parents a lot, my mom and my dad. Um, you know, they've – they didn't grow up with a silver spoon, had to work for a lot. Um, I'm blessed to be able to uh, be born into a family of such hard workers. And, um, you know, though they, they never showed me that side, um, I'm, you know, just extremely blessed that they have allowed me to just grow up in such a well, well uh, rounded home. And then on the basketball side, I have to say Stephen Curry. Uh, it's something about players being written off and then just you know, making such a huge name for themselves, it's uh, very motivating. And so I look up to him a lot. And then uh, if you had to pick a, a funniest teammate uh, on, on this current team, who, who, would you, who would you pick? I'd have to say Alicia Norman, um, just carefree. You know, she's hilarious. It's never really a dull moment with her. And so she cracks me up all the time. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on the court this year. Thank you. More with uh, Basketball Titan Media Day right after this. All right, back at Detroit Mercy Media Day, wrapping up our final interview of the day. Another newcomer to the men's basketball program, Noah Waterman. Noah, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Noah, we, we, we must say that we are all, always really intrigued anytime we get someone who, you know, who we're told, who, you know, it can shoot the ball, obviously, with, with your height. So we're going to take this back a little bit. 
you were six two like four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Tell us about this growth spurt. I was I was six two um, my sophomore year, and then once I hit junior and senior year, I just grew to six eleven real quick. I had no offers, but I started getting offers my senior year. Yeah, that, That's that, kind of how it happened. Yeah, I mean, height does wonders, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it does. It does. Uh, you know, talk about that, though, obviously growing up a, a, as a guard your whole life. So you have a lot of those skills, you know, being able to handle the ball, being able to shoot. But, you know, now being able to be 6'10 and 6'11 and doing that as well. I mean, what are some of the things you had, to, you know, what are some of the things that you really had to, like, grow, you know, grow with those skills that make you become the player you are now? No, right. So um, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny because I played guard, like point guard and shooting guard my whole life until – until my senior year, really. And then I played and moved to, like, the four. But um, the the one thing that really had to, like, grow on me was my shot because I grew so fast and my limbs, like, grew. So my shot was kind of off for a couple of years. But I, I got that back, so. You know, talking about, you know, these couple of weeks here at practices, you know, working with the team and getting ready for the season, uh, you know, what have you seen from yourself and from the, your teammates out there? Um, I think we're going to have a great season. To be honest, we got a lot of skill. Um, I'm just excited to start. It, you know, is it, it, it kind of frustrating for you right now? Because obviously you're, you're waiting for the NCAA wa waiver, at least that process. I mean, we all wanted to say yes, but I mean, if it's, if it's a no, I guess at least in one way, shape, or form, you get an answer. But this whole process, you've been waiting around during the pandemic to get around playing, playing with teammates again. Um, but now you're still sitting around waiting. I mean, what, what, what kind of, you know, it, it, that has to be frustrating. No, yeah, it is, it's frustrating at times, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the waiver, so I'm not trying to worry about that too much. I'm just trying to stay in the gym and keep working. Uh, you know, when you're talking about, you know, playing for, you know, Coach Davis, um, obviously, you know, you know, he loves offense. He loves guys who can shoot the ball. But this team needs to get better defensively as well. And obviously, you know, your height, your athleticism, is something that's going to help this team. So, what, you know, what has he told you about, you know, yourself and your role with this team? No, yeah, I think um, the main thing we all just have to work on is, is defense, as you said. Like our offense, we're very skilled on the offensive end. But once we get our defense straight, I think we're going to be a tough team. Now, you, you know, you told me that you, what do you have, like seven or seven or eight brothers and sisters? I got, yeah, eight. I, I mean, well, that, that's got to be, you know, quite a battle at the dinner table here. No, you know? it, it was. It was back in the day. <laughs> so, um, you, know, tell, you know, tell me about, you know, your brothers and sisters. Are they older? Are they younger? Do they play sports? You know, what, what is it about them? Yeah, actually, um, my two older brothers that are closer in age to me, um, they played basketball at, like, a community college. And that's how I actually started playing basketball because I started very late. I started my eighth grade year, and I just watched my brother play, so I wanted to play. Um, but so no, 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 one, no one else really plays sports? No, nobody else. <laughs> they play music. <laughs> that, that's their thing. So, it's a, you know, great transition here. Been having some fun with some of the guys here talking about music. Uh, you know, who, who's the best dancer on the team? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I'm going to have to say myself. I mean, I'm not trying to brag, but. We, 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 might, we might have to have you end the segment here. With the uh, I don't know there. about so, that. You, feel we, me? We, we, you know, you, you, know you, you, you got the hair going here. You got the uniform on. You might have to bust out a move I, I might have to. I might no, have I, to. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make you jealous, so I'm not going to do that. I mean, show. if I do it, you're going to have to <laughs> yeah. do it, you know? <laughs> um, you know, if you had, you know, if you had to pick an emoji that represents Noah Waterman, what would it be? That's a good question. Probably uh, the hundred percent, little little mark. Why is that? Because uh, everything I do, I do with a hundred percent of my effort. Um, I, you know, obviously, you know, we, we talked about it, your growth spurt, and how, you know, being someone who's six ten, six eleven, can really shoot the ball. That's really going to get interest of, you know, professional level teams. So we're going to ask you if you're if you're playing in the NBA right now. I don't know what position you want to give yourself. Maybe you're going to give yourself a point. I don't know, or maybe it's the four, whatever it is. But name the other four guys around you that you want around you. I'm going to have to go, I mean, LeBron. Obviously, it can be older players, too, uh, like retired uh, players. I mean, let, let's keep it the current players. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to go LeBron, KD. I want Steph, myself. Now I'm going to have to get, like, JaVel McGee for the <laughs> rebounds, you know. <laughs> I mean, who, who's missing shots on that team? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, one last thing, you know, you talked about, you know, you talked about before the, the mentality going into the season here. Obviously, open, you know, opening the game, you know, uh, opening the season at Richmond, you know, at Kentucky. You know, what's it going to be like to play those two teams, those two teams that could very well find themselves in the Final Four at the end of the year? No, right. I'm very excited to play them, you know. Um, always wanted to play Kentucky my whole life, so this is really uh, – 
one for the books. What, what, what's Brad been saying about the Kentucky game? Nah, he, he hasn't told me much. You know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's, not, he's not letting that. He knows Kentucky not not letting us. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he knows who's paying the bills, I he, guess. He does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Noah, man, it's great, you know, great for you to join us here. And you're the last guy on our Detroit Mercy Media Day. So thank you for joining us. Fans out there, you know, thank you for joining us. Detroit Mercy Media Day the basketball season. It's, it's been a while. It didn't look like we would get to this point, but a couple of weeks away, both men's and women's basketball tipping off November 25th. DetroitTitans.com, all your information. Thank you, guys. Thanks.